Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing a rare treat, a watch so colorful you can almost taste it. This is candy for your eyes. The Elaine Silberstein Bolito Chrono. You can see and you can purchase this almost Dadaist, modernist, or even postmodernist chronograph on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos, and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full listing for this extraordinary watch, a limited series of 100 pieces in stainless steel. Now on my wrist, 6 and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference, you can see that this watch is large, so large in fact that it was considered one of the original over sized references. Alain Silberstein of France founded his eponymous manufacturer during the 1980s, back before it was cool to be an independent watch brand and before it was cool to be postmodernist in style. Back then the collector movement was just beginning to coalesce around wristwatches and even then only the great houses and only the most serious and established styles and model lines. Something like this, and make no mistake, Silberstein launched with something like this right out of the gate was beyond the pale. Even by the 1990s when this watch came out, it was still considered to be one of the most audacious styles, the Silberstein style, in all of high horology. The watch was compared to the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore, it was compared to the Panerai Luminor, but it really could only be compared in the sense that it was outrageous and large, but it doesn't wear quite as large as its fearsome reputation would have suggested. Again, like grunge, big in the 1990s and often misunderstood, this is a watch that has to be experienced to be fully appreciated. It's all about the live experience. Now, the watch on my wrist measures a substantial 32 millimeters from 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock, not inclusive of crown or chronograph pushers. It's not particularly thick. 13.4 millimeters, it is a very compact integrated chronograph caliper inside. One thing that I will mention is just the stylistic flair that's in evidence from every angle. Look at how the flanks of the case are almost like straight broncard that actually run above the plane of the crystal. Great for preservation of your crystal, yes, but also aesthetically superb. Now you'll also note that the crystal itself features a dramatic camber that produces a charming off-axis distortion by design. And from lug to lug, the watch is large, but again, not quite what you might have expected. 48 millimeters from lug to lug makes this a wearable watch, but it's the style, perhaps, that causes the watch to look as though it wears two sizes larger than it really is. Now one of the most intriguing features, and the feature that allows it to wear on a small wrist, again, remember my wrist for reference is 16 centimeters in circumference, but the feature that allows this watch to wear on an even smaller wrist, I would say down to 14 and a half, is the spectacular pivoted hinge lug. Now you can see how the Gaudron style of the case band is continued, and it moves seamlessly held between these two flanking broncards on both sides, and the colors of the watch are almost Mondrian-esque, but not quite. More on that in a moment. What you will get on both sides is a spectacular French manufactured leather strap. This is probably the original strap that came with the watch. It's in outstanding condition, and these are almost impossible to find today. So this watch is a rare opportunity to purchase something approaching a time capsule Silberstein Bolito Chrono. You can see even the filigree style wire loop pin buckle is designed, and I mean that in the strictest sense. Elaine Silberstein was an architect and interior designer who decided to tackle horology. Not someone who came from business, not someone who came from watchmaking, he's a pure artist. You can see that recapitulated in every single feature of the watch. Again, primary colors, fundamental shapes, a form that is large, strong, and pure. And you can see when you duck down from the high polish of the steel case to the plane of the dial, the dial has incredible depth. You can see the sub-registers have actually been scalloped out of the minutes and seconds chaptering outboard. The colors are deliberately exaggerated. They're not traditional Mondrian-esque, de steel, yellow, red, and blue primary colors. Rather, the yellow is that of a airfield ambulance or fire truck. It is a dramatic signal, almost 
almost fluorescent yellow-green. You can see the red is vivid, far more than a standard red. It's not crimson. It's more colorful, almost to match the, the Ferrari red of the strap itself. And the blue isn't so much a cobalt as you normally see on blued hands in horology. It's more like a Riviera blue. It's vivid. It has a life to it. Even small features like the seconds hand, again, deliberately styled and stylized. Everything about this watch has personality. You could easily miss the fact that it has a discrete and functional date window at six. And that's the key thing about this watch. It is a functional everyday companion. A chronograph based on a Frédéric Piguet 1185, that is the Blancpain, the Audemars Piguet, the Vacheron chronograph movement used over the years. It has a high horology heart inside with 37 jewels hand assembled, featuring both column wheel and vertical clutch, automatic winding, and 40 hour power reserve. You can actually see the column wheel just below my finger. Between the red accents, the yellow of the balance wheel and the train, the blue of the column wheel, and you'll, you'll even note that there is a beautiful red and skeletonized wheel evident. I believe that's part of the reduction system for the automatic winding. This is a watch that is styled inside and out. Spectacular, memorable, pioneering. There's a reason that in the modern era, no less an independent horology name than MBNF has repeatedly collaborated with Aline Silberstein. This is a name once riding high on the rise again as these older Silbersteins get recognized for their pioneering style distinctive form, use of color, use of shape, historical references to architecture, art design, industrial design. The value of these watches has stabilized and is beginning to creep up, get ahead of the curve. For the man who can laugh at everything, including himself, Elaine Silberstein is an absolute necessity for your collection. You can see this one and buy it on our website.